Okay, so let us talk about uh, LU decomposition with partial pivoting. Okay, so we know that this is the system of equation that you are solving, and in LU decomposition, what you do is you convert this A into L and U. Now why do we need partial pivoting? I think uh, we have already discussed this. Um, when you talk about Gauss elimination, you are encountered with a situation or scenario where it's division by zero and when there is a round of error, you see that the Gauss elimination is very sensitive to, to round of error. And we have discussed this uh, in the topic pitfall of Gauss elimination, pitfalls of Gauss elimination. Okay, so to circumvent those pitfalls, what we do is we make use of this method known as partial pivoting. Okay, so the technique is similar to the Gauss elimination. Okay, the only change here is going to be we are going to multiply this equation by p where P is known as permutation matrix. Now this permission permutation matrix is going to keep the record of pivoting. Okay, so what we are going to do here is we are going to multiply the permutation matrix on both the sides. So this becomes P and this becomes P. So in LU decomposition with partial pivoting, this thing these two matrices we are going to convert it into L and J. Okay. So let us uh, solve one problem. Let us say we have a problem where uh, this is going to be. So as in the previous video, what you are going to do is you are going to convert this matrix into L and J. Okay. And in addition to that, there will be another matrix that is known as permutation matrix, which is nothing but your identity matrix. So I am keeping record of permutation matrix. The permutation matrix is only, only going to change when you perform pivoting. Okay. So as I have discussed, uh, basically what you are going to do is you are going to write down this matrix and uh, you are going to perform the generic Gauss elimination where you make this element, this element, this element zero. Now, I'm not going to repeat each and every step because I have been discussing this from past three videos. So I hope you guys are well aware with this. So this is going to be R3 plus this is going to be my multiplier. So once I perform this operation, this remains the same, this doesn't change. The only change that is going to happen is going to be here and that comes out to be minus 5.75 minus 1.5. Okay. Uh, Sorry, one more thing. Uh, this is uh, LUD composition with partial pivoting. I, I forgot to tell you one very important step. That is to decide your pivot. Okay. But luckily, in this uh, uh, here, we don't need to pivot. So what do you do in pivoting? Before before performing this operation, you have to pivot. So what, what you do in pivoting is, you take the first column. Okay. And you find out the element, the absolute value of element the largest value of the largest element okay which has the largest magnitude you, you are going to find out the, the element which has the largest magnitude okay. so if you see here it has largest magnitude 3 and 2 so according to partial pivoting what you have to do is the element which has largest absolute value you are going to bring it on the top so if you see here it's already on the top so that is why if you see pivoting was not required in this step and I directly jumped here, but you should always take care while performing LED component 
partial pivoting is that you take care of this pivot step. Okay, and in this problem, it's it's uh, symmetrical. It's, it's of no importance. Anyways, and now let us move on to the next operation. So the next operation, if you see, is R two. We are going to perform this experiment uh, operation on R two. And if you do that, if you perform this x uh, this operation on R two, you'll find out the value that you're getting. Zero, zero. This is going to be minus one point three seven five, minus five point seven five, seven point seven five, minus one point five. Okay. Now, once you have done this, you have made this zero, this zero. We'll focus our attention on making this element zero. But since this is partial pivoting, this is what partial pivoting. Before performing the next uh, operation. In the next column, what you are going to do is you are going to take this column, that is these two elements, and whichever element has highest absolute value, you are going to bring it on the top. That means this row is going to come here, and this row is going to come here. Okay. So row one remains the same. And row three becomes row two, and row two becomes row three. Okay, so this is how you are going to perform partial pivoting. Now you have performed partial pivoting on this matrix. Matrix. You are also going to perform partial pivoting on this matrix as well. So you are going to bring it here, and you are going to bring it here. So this is this is your P. I'm sorry, this is your P. So now your P will become what? This is going to be the same. But the only thing is, this will come on this side, and then this will come on this side. So this is zero, one, zero. Okay. So once you have done pivoting, again you are going to perform your elementary. Row operation. It is going to be R3. One point three seven five. Five point seven five. R2. Okay. Once you do that, eight one minus two. Zero. This is going to be the same. This is going to be minus one point five, and this becomes zero zero eight point one zero eight six nine. Okay, so this is your U matrix, and what about L matrix? L matrix you are going to generate from the multiplier. This is going to be the same. Okay, whichever. Operation, whichever multiplier you have used to make this element zero, the same multiplier will come here. For here, this same multiplier will come here. For this same multiplier will come here. So that is going to be this, this, and this multiplier. And make sure that you take the opposite value. That means if it's positive, then it's going to be negative. If negative, it's going to be positive. So if you do that, this comes out to be zero point. Two five. This comes out to be zero point three seven five, and this comes out to be zero point two three nine one three. So this is your L matrix. So this is your L matrix. This is your uh, U matrix, and this is your permutation matrix. Okay. So now again, if you uh, do back substitution. As we did, this is your B, and if you do the back substitution as we did, you'll find out the value of y1 is minus 20, the value of y2 is minus 43, and value of y3 is minus 16.2174, and also the value of x3 
I'm not going to show you back substitution because it's very trivial. And if you have doubt, please refer to my previous video. And an x1 is going to be 4. So this is how you are going to do your uh, back substitution. So at this point, you might be thinking that uh, what's the point of uh, permutation matrix? So basically, before doing back substitution, you are going to take your permutation matrix here, then B matrix here, and then you are going to multiply this. And that is going to be your new improved B. Okay. And then you are going to perform back substitution on, on this, uh, sorry, LU. And then you will find out these values. Okay. So if in case you are thinking that we have not used permutation matrix, we will be using before performing back substitution, forward substitution. You will multiply P by B and you will you'll find out B star. Okay, and then you'll you'll apply the conventional back substitution forward substitution to find out the intermediate y and then the final x. Okay, so uh, I think this is it uh, for LU decomposition with partial poverty.